Hey, this is Warren Redlick. We're gonna talk about what's wrong with this picture from Tesla Investor Day. This is huge. This, this is gonna be big. What is the distribution of electric vehicles? What is the allocation? How many of different types of electric vehicles will there be in our electric vehicle robo-taxi future? Let's get into it. Are you ready? Let's go. Before we dive in, I'm wearing the Baglino Fan Club t-shirt, t-shirts at elonbits.com. You can also get stainless steel water bottles like Elon and Tesla water bottles at elonbits.com. Drew Baglino, if you don't know, is the number two guy, arguably at Tesla, number two or number three guy at Tesla. He appeared with Elon at Battery Day. He appeared with Elon at Investor Day uh, and was on the stage at Investor Day a lot. So let's dive into this picture. So what we have here is a slide talking about the transition to our sustainable future. This is a whole conversation about the transition to the sustainable future. And Elon and Drew said, that the switch to electric vehicles gets us 21% of the way to full sustainability. Heat pumps matter, generation matters, but they're saying that 21% of the gain is the switch to electric vehicles, and that's gonna require a $7 trillion manufacturing investment. This is really substantial. There's other stuff I'm gonna talk about in a future video about how some of the other aspects of the transition to sustainable energy are much more affordable. This 7 trillion is out of 10 trillion total, so the other 80% of the transition is going to cost $3 trillion. So this is a huge chunk, but this is a necessary chunk. So what we see here is a depiction of the global electric fleet. I think this is a reference to 2050. This is not 2030. We're not going to have this many electric vehicles by 2030. This is somewhere in the future. Maybe it's 2040. My sense of everything I saw was this is actually their vision for 2050, which is looking pretty far down the road since we're in 2023. What you see is 40 million vehicles of the SX class. Presumably this includes other luxury electric sedans and other luxury electric SUVs, not just Tesla vehicles. Then you get 380 million of Model 3 and Model Y class sedans and SUVs. Again, presumably other companies are making them as well. Semi, 20 million, 300 million of Cybertruck and an undisclosed other vehicle that most people think is a van and then 700 million of the robo-taxi platform vehicle, which is presumably more than one vehicle. So I think this picture is wrong. Now, we're always wrong. We should strive to be less wrong. The odds are that Elon and Drew have a better vision of the future than I do. But when I look at this, this just doesn't make sense. When I think about a robo-taxi future, I envision a world going forward where the vast majority of the population chooses to ride in robo-taxis rather than owning their own vehicles. Now look, I'm wealthy. I'm probably gonna to continue to own my own car. A lot of the people who watch this channel are Tesla shareholders. You're wealthy, you're gonna own your own car. It's hard to put ourselves in the mind of people who, for whom it's a struggle to own your own car. And if we're heading to a world, if you look at uh, Kathy Wood, ARK Invest projection of the future of a robo-taxi world, it's gonna cost 25 cents a mile for a ride in a vehicle like the Tesla, the future Tesla robo-taxi vehicle. And currently the cost of owning a vehicle is around 70 cents a mile. So if you can ride around without having to worry about a car, that basically if you're able to ride in the equivalent of Ubers for one-tenth of the cost of an Uber and one-third of the cost of owning your own car, a lot of people are going to say, I don't want the hassle of owning my own car if I can get rides quickly and easily and make my life more convenient. People think that this is crazy. People are going to want to own their own cars. No, owning a car is a hassle for most people. Number one, it's a cost. Number two, you have to have a place to keep it. There's all these things associated with owning a car. You've got to change the tires. You've got to change the windshield wipers, maintenance. There's all these things that go on with a car. And, you know, vehicle registration, getting it washed, all these things that if you live in a robo-taxi world and you just the robo-taxi life, you don't have to worry about any of that. You just get a ride when you need it. And if the robo-taxis are very, very common, if the wait for a ride is two or three minutes, and the ride drops you off at the front door of the place you're going and picks you up at the front door of the place, and as opposed to you having to park a quarter mile away or hundreds of yards away, if it removes a lot of those frustrations for you, then for a lot of people, that's going to be better. So if you step away from people who live on $200,000 a year and you go to people who live on forty dollars or $50,000 a year and you realize how difficult and challenging life is for them, this is the vast majority of the world's population. So I don't think there's that much of the world's population that is going to decide to own 420 million of these vehicles. 
that's this is the ultimate challenge is you know the 40 million are there that many rich people are they going to choose to own high-end luxury vehicles yeah maybe but when you get to this balance here the fact that there's only 700 million robo taxi vehicles when i think that 80 percent or 90 percent of the world's population is going to choose this over this they're going to choose this life so that's one problem now another problem let's talk about this robo taxi platform vehicle in 700 million uh, units okay currently there's somewhere in the ballpark of 2 billion vehicles in the world and elon has said and i think he's actually underestimating that a robo taxi vehicle like this will replace five internal combustion engine vehicles because it drives itself so the robo taxi will drive let's say 10 hours a day instead of two hours a day now i actually think they're going to drive 16 hours a day instead of 10 hours a day and they might replace eight regular vehicles as opposed to only five but let's go with five elon says that each robo taxi is effectively going to replace five people they're gonna be five times more valuable because they'll be able to drive five times as many hours if you take the 700 million of these vehicles and you multiply by five you get 3.5 billion vehicles so if these are robo taxis, they're not just replacing the global fleet of 2 billion vehicles, they're replacing more than the global fleet. And you have these other vehicles, some of which will be, you know, Cybertruck will operate in a robo taxi form. This van is probably going to operate as a robo taxi. Some of the threes and whys will operate as robo taxis. Maybe the S's and X's won't so much, but you've got a total of 1.4 million vehicles. And if they're five times as useful as the previous generation without self-driving, then you've got 7 million, the equivalent of 7 million vehicles. You've replaced your 2 billion vehicle fleet with set the equivalent of 7 billion vehicles. So that doesn't really add up. We don't need this many vehicles in a robo-taxi world unless we start using transportation more. If the robo-taxi world radically improves our economy, makes it easier for us to travel more, makes, makes our lives better, makes us effectively wealthier. Even if we're not numer nominally wealthier, if the cost of a lot of things goes down and we decide, well, transportation's really cheap now, I'm going to take more trips, then maybe that 3x is demand for rides. Maybe 3.5x is demand for rides. I'm not sure about that. So that's one problem is this math doesn't add up. If you take that math and you say... Well, we're going to 5x. So you, again, I think, I think you're actually 8xing their utility. I think that these vehicles are going to drive 16 hours a day instead of two hours a day. And that's just nuts. You know, eight times 1.4, you're over 10 billion vehicles. That the equivalent of 10 billion vehicles. So is global, are people going to use transportation 5x more? I think the population is probably going to be peaking around that. It's not like population is growing and we're going to have, you know, five times as many people to use these, this transportation. This is the challenge and the population is aging and when people get older they're probably not going to travel as much you know at a certain point past a certain point past say 80 or 90 years old they're not going to travel as much so that's one problem but my biggest problem with this is the distribution of vehicles should be a lot more shifted towards the robo taxi platform vehicle it's going to be much less expensive it's going to be half the cost right half the cost of the three and y platform the demand for that is like 10x the demand for these vehicles the total addressable market for this is much larger. So I see the future being much more heavily shifted towards this robo-taxi platform vehicle. And then you have this van. We think it's going to be a van. I think the van is going to offer very low-cost transportation, particularly in the developing world where saving a few cents a mile is going to add up to people. You know, 25 cents a mile versus 5 cents a mile or maybe even a penny a mile is going to make a lot of sense for people who are struggling financially that they're going to take this ride. Cybertruck, I don't, you know, I'm guessing that the vast majority of the 300 million is this van ver version rather than Cybertruck. Cybertruck's market is pretty much the United States and not not a whole lot of other places. I don't haven't seen any plans for Tesla to sell a Cybertruck in other markets. It's probably predominantly a US, North America, Canada, maybe a little bit Australia, but a small Australia is a small country. I don't see a lot of other places that Cybertruck's going to rock in. Who knows if it ends up having a uh, substantial value in commercial use. Maybe that makes sense in some places, but I just don't see that scaling. So it's really this van that's going to matter. The third thing that troubles me about this, and for those who follow me know, probably know where I'm going already, is this vehicle is going to get the cost down to, let's say, 25 cents a mile. And that's not low enough to really accelerate the entire world's transition to sustainable energy. And I think there's room for a single passenger electric vehicle. You know, my, the one I'm working on, I'm going to call the pod car. 
but a single passenger electric vehicle that has one third of the frontal surface area, that's more aerodynamic, that weighs a lot less. This vehicle's probably gonna weigh ballpark 2,500 pounds. The engineering work that we've done so far, my pod car's gonna weigh less than 500 pounds. So the battery pack on this vehicle is probably gonna be 40 kilowatt hours. The battery pack on my pod car is probably gonna be less than 10 kilowatt hours. So you're gonna be able to accelerate the transition to sustainable energy for people who can't afford to live like we do. For people who live in poorer countries, in India, in Egypt, in Brazil, there are a lot of countries in the world where there's a lot of people who are struggling financially and they live on say $2,500 a year instead of $50,000 a year or $100,000 a year. For people living on $2,500 a year, if you can save them 20 bucks somewhere, that adds up fast for those folks. But we can really make a big change. And I see a world where there's hundreds of millions of pod cars, single passenger electric vehicles. Once you get past the point where humans aren't driving on the road anymore, and it's just electric, uh, and it's just self-driving vehicles, the safety value of having a larger vehicle to protect you while you're driving goes away. By this point, if this is 2050, humans aren't driving anymore, or at least they're driving in such low volume that they're not a significant impact. And these vehicles, the self-driving hardware and software has gotten incredibly safe. And you're basically safe in the vehicle. You probably don't even need to wear a seatbelt. And so a lightweight vehicle is the, really the path to the future. Now, it may be premature. I'm probably jumping the gun by trying to start up the pod car now. But when I look at the future and I say, how do we deliver this transition to sustainable energy to people who can't afford to ride in these? You go to places where people are choosing to ride on mopeds, where people are choosing to ride in rickshaws and tuk-tuks, you're, you're to places where people are already riding in vehicles that are significantly less safe than the pod car that we're designing. That's fundamentally what's wrong with this picture is I think this distribution of vehicles, it doesn't make sense on its own story that you're creating effectively more vehicles than the world can possibly need. It doesn't really address the balance between these high-end vehicles and these low-end vehicles. Most of the world can't afford these. Most of the world. You know, the U.S., Western Europe, and China maybe, or part of China, some chunk of the Chinese population. Outside of those three places, you know, Canada, whatever, maybe a little bit Japan. I mean, Japan has not bought a lot of Teslas, even though Japan is a wealthy country. The preference in a lot of countries is for smaller vehicles. Europe pretty much prefers smaller vehicles too. So I think we're heading toward, towards a world where these vehicles are going to be very, very small. This van is going to be large and this robo-taxi platform vehicle is going to be large, but it really makes sense to head towards a single passenger electric vehicle. My prototype is... I think getting close to finished, uh, getting close to almost finished. I got some other work to do after I get it back from the engineers working on it for me. And once that's done, I expect to take this forward and, and we'll see. But it's not just me. Like, you know, I think that we will see the future has to trend towards that. And this is an example where I feel like, I feel like Elon is missing. It's just stunning for me to say this. I feel like Elon is missing first principles thinking. He said at Autonomy Day, that 80% of all trips are a single passenger going from point A to point B. Well, then from first principles thinking, you should be thinking, what's the most efficient way to transport one person from point A to point B? And choosing a 2,500 pound vehicle with 30 square feet of frontal surface area over a 500 pound vehicle with 12 square feet of frontal surface area, it doesn't make sense from a first principle standpoint. This vehicle's probably gonna get six miles a kilowatt hour the pod car I see getting 20 miles a kilowatt hour, that may be over-optimistic, but 15 seems almost obvious. That lighter weight means less tire wear. There's so many reasons why that's a much better way forward for the future. What do you think about the future distribution of vehicles? Am I wrong? What am I missing? How can I be less wrong? Is Elon wrong or Drew, Drew wrong? Are they less wrong? How can we be less wrong? What do you think? Please let me know in the comments below. Check out the t-shirts and the stainless steel water bottles at elonbits.com. Please check out my other videos. Support me on the Locals platform on Patreon or as a YouTube channel member. You can also subscribe to me now on Twitter. Just real quick to thank Fred Jessup from Sugar Slice who sent me this Tesla lamp. I don't know what we're gonna call it. It's really cool. It actually looks better in person than it looks on video.